Okay, it's time to revisit the Huawei P9 for one main reason. Back when I reviewed it the first time, I still didn't get to review other flagships like the LG G5 and HTC 10 yet, and therefore called it the top two phone alongside with the Samsung Galaxy S7. And that's why I had to check once again if it still holds that title or things that maybe changed in the meantime. I will keep this review a little bit shorter because everything I said in my initial review is still legit and I'm running an Android and test version here so I won't be quite able to show up everything like I would like to but you will definitely get all the information and I would say let's get to the design and build quality. I still think that it feels very very premium in terms of build also in terms of design very compact with a great one hand usability. The metal back though is still a little bit slippery but therefore you get things like the amazing button placement with really great tactile buttons. This is done as good as on not any other phone and that sounded weird but it's okay. USB type C here. We have a speaker that you don't really block all that much and the headphone jack at the bottom with a notification LED at the top and one thing that a lot of people are complaining about and that is the black bezel all around. So if you really have a problem with that on the white version, just get the gray version where everything is black and you shouldn't mind it. But overall, I still think design and build quality absolutely top notch. Same as for the display because I would say this is not just the best 1080p IPS display but the best IPS display on the market period. It may not be as sharp as something like the HTC 10 but therefore it makes up for that with an amazing calibration and still is very sharp because it's very clear but the great thing is just the amazing white point that you can even change with a color temperature control setting in the options but you have really great blacks a little bit of IPS go which is absolutely normal but therefore the pretty much best calibration I could think of because it is a little bit saturated but just so little that it doesn't seem dull or washed out but therefore vibrant and vivid still maintaining a very accurate look. It is a very bright panel so auto visibility is great and the viewing angles are stable and that's why I'm so in love with this display. And if you want the best AMOLED display go for something like the S7 but if you want the best IPS display go for this one and I would like to go to the sound now. Yes, cupping will definitely help to improve the sound, but it is already very good because it is very loud, clear, good mids, solid all there, all around. The balance is really nice with quite warm, rich sound. And it is one of the best button firing speakers. Of course, it can't really hold up with all of the front facing ones, but it is definitely way above average in general. Now, when we talk about the headphone jack quality, it still is just about average in terms of quality and also volume. There, they definitely could improve things. And just to get a little bit to the performance, like I said, I'm running an Android and test version here. So don't see everything like you want it to, because as you can see, it is still absolutely battery smooth. It is really great. And this Android N version is at least at 90, 95% of what we got on marshmallows so don't worry about that it will come in time but i just wanted to show off really quick that it works really really nice still absolutely it's not quite as good as L the lg g5 for samsung Galaxy S7, and even the hc10 felt a little bit nicer to me after all by now but i still can't really complain and the ram management is absolutely fine and as you can see here with the android n version you get the more stock android like app draw because a lot of people recent launch apps because a lot of people still complained about the thing that this one has the side scrolling one so this will be fixed in n once you get that to the battery i have to say i am very disappointed that you don't get a quick charger here in the box because for the price it shouldn't be a problem because with the standard charger it takes about 2 hours and 20 and from what i've seen on the internet with the quick charger from for example the um, p9 plus or what have i made eight you should get around 1 hour 40 if not even faster. The battery life on its own is definitely solid. In mixed use I got around 4, 4 and a half hours but just like 3 days ago I got a new update that should improve the standby drain and I noticed that it definitely does. So that could definitely improve the 2 day use for you because it really was actually better. So maybe expect even more so and like I said I always use a little bit of a higher brightness than most people and I use it just a little bit different. So I guess you should be even more so on the safe side getting even maybe like 5 hours and it's actually very good in terms of mobile data drain. So all good here. And just to show you real quick what you can expect in the new software here, this is what it looks like. So this looks a lot like, <laughs> I have to say iOS, and this looks more like 
um, the Samsung Galaxy S7 with a black theme, but we have now an option with a draw and all that, but I don't really want to go all that much into that since this is not what you will see. So if you want to see the software, just go check, for example, my Huawei Mate 8 video where I check the software or just check the Huawei P9 video, but I don't really have to say all that much about it. It definitely is already good as it is, but with Android N, at least in my opinion, they are making some good steps forward, but a few things are still there that should improve. And that's why I want to go to the camera. I won't really show off anything because of one thing. Just check one back Nels review. And I definitely agree with him in one term. It is pretty much the best camera for stilts, at least on par with the Samsung Galaxy 7. In my opinion, in video, it lacks a little bit. It does not at all the great. The selfie cam is absolutely top. So if you want to see some pics, just check his review or check my old review. But that's all I have to say. Now let's get to the conclusion. Is it still the top two phone? And I would say, uh, I would say, got a little bit tighter because something like the HTC 10 is definitely more popular, and in terms of performance, just a little better. Also, th there are a few different things where it could be better than this one. The one thing that I've noticed that I'm not as happy as I was back then is the performance because don't worry, it is still absolutely top notch. Also for gaming, doesn't really heat up all that much and super capable still. But phones with a Snapdragon 820 or even the Exynos on the Samsung Galaxy 7 just feel like they would use a higher frame. It just feel a little bit smoother here. I noticed some more motion blur and the little bit of different scrolling that you get on Huawei devices in general. So it still is like 90, 95% of those flagships, but I noticed after all that it's not quite as lag free and not as consistently smooth as those are, but still totally fine. Don't get me wrong. And in all the other apartments, it's absolutely top design. It rivals the very best one being maybe even better in hand feel than the Samsung Galaxy 7. The sound is definitely better. Not for the headphone jack though. Like I said, performance is great. Battery life is solid, but there are better ones, but it's still Totally on par with the other flagships, even better than the LG G5, for example. Software is the one main grab a lot of people still have. If they are coming from something more mainstream or a stock Android phone, this will take some time getting used to. But if you take the time, you will still definitely enjoy this, in my opinion. And then there is the camera that is amazing for stills, maybe not all that great for videos. So I have a harder time calling it the top two phone now, because I would say place number two and three is very occupied along with the LG G5. HTC 10 and maybe this one alongside with some other flagships that I maybe didn't get review. So it's still an absolutely great phone and especially for the price right now it has a great value because at around 470 euros here in Germany it is cheaper than most of the other flagships. Only the LG G5 is cheaper because it didn't sell well but it's definitely better in terms of value than for example the S7 and definitely like the HTC 10 because those are usually a lot more expensive and you get after all a phone that can easily compete with those. So don't get me wrong, it is still on par with those and I totally forgot to show off one thing. Here are the pros and cons and I have to now talk a little bit to pass the time for you to be able to read that. But I would actually like to say this has been it. The video was, I would say, a little bit shorter than at least the normal review. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have anything else to say or if you want to make a comment, just leave them down in the comments. And if you want to check the Android N videos, definitely check those because this will give you a glimpse on what you can expect. I guess you have seen those. I will just leave them on and I wish you a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this review and maybe subscribe to the channel. Okay, I see you next time. Bye.